Welcome uh, to the Welcome to the regular board meeting of the uh, Board of School Directors of the School District of Springfield Township. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A reading of the mission statement. The mission of the School District of Springfield Township is to educate and develop all students as learners and citizens who are high achieving, resilient, and responsible in a changing global community. Roll call, Ms. Kerr. Mr. Bedard? Mr. Chapman? Here. Ms. Jordan? Here. Mr. Lapidus? Ms. Nelson? Mr. Rayer? Here. Ms. Sarsfield? Ms. Sapinski? Here. Dr. Teratuski? Here. Announcements. The board at its discretion may videotape all or any portion of the public board meeting subject to the limitations set forth in policy 006.2, broadcasting of meetings. Board meetings will be broadcast on Friday afternoon following the board meeting. Uh, are there any public comments on agenda items? Yes, there is. Okay. okay. All right. Up and please state your name and yeah. uh, where you, tell me where you live. I, I guess you weren't expecting any public comment, of course, because you don't have that much around, so I guess that's why you didn't put the chair down. Um, name is Giuseppe, G-I-U-S-E-P-P-E, Monticelli, M-O-N-T-I-C-E-L-L-I, Ward 7-2. Uh, I'm going to be talking about a few things here. First up is the personal attachment here that you have set forth. By the way, I am recording this conversation pursuant to the Pennsylvania Sunshine Act. Uh, personal attachment, you know, the conference workshops, I brought this forth to you back on May 14th and also November 5th. Um, it looks like you're doing well this month. I mean, you don't have that much uh, casino binges going on. The only one I would object to uh, tonight is uh, Ms. Johnson's, unfortunately. And uh, she is going on a Harris, what is this, uh, Carbon County, Monroe County mm -hmm. casino binge. But I don't think there's any casinos up there unless they're owned by the Indians. And that's going to cost approximately $975. Quite excessive. But the other one's not too much excessive. And I really do have to applaud uh, you for doing that. I mean, not too much excessive. Um, the only one I would have to point out, though, is this uh, Kathy Murphy changing how we feel by changing how we think. Geez, um, I wonder how that could be done. Maybe that needs to be done here in this district for sexual abuse victims. And the way I think that most appropriately can be done, and I think, uh, Karen, you would know what I'm talking about, is through CBT, Cognitive Behavior Therapy. And, you know, I, I see that's a need. So, uh, I'm, you know, that's great that's on there. So let's go over here to the Treasurer's Report F. Find a few things here that are very, very interesting to go over. On February 7th, 2019, there was a check made out for four transactions to the Horsham Clinic. We all know what the Horsham Clinic is for sure. I've done some undercover journalism there, and that's one hell of a place to send a student. And in total, you spent $2,250 straight even. We call that a rough 2000 if you round that up. And their Erdenheim services from November all the way up to January, it looks like. I wonder what's going on there, but of course, this is compared, uh, of course. Mr. Davis, of course, mentioned that back on May 14th, so I don't expect an answer on that. Next up, we have here is Foundations Behavioral Health, which, of course, is LifeWork School. And a full day there for the autism, special, uh, autism program is $11,800. That is quite excessive. And that was done and made out uh, via check on February 14th, it's a warehouse. Can't believe you send kids there. My God. Um, 
Next up is Lakeside Educational, which is pretty much the same joint as Foundations. Pretty much the same joint, uh, but they, they're a little bit less. Um, you have checks going out on the 22nd of February of this year, and in total you have $6,169.75. But one thing I found very interesting is you have this REACH Cyber Charter School, which is online. Why is it that you can't send these kids instead of these warehouses to this online charter schools? Because it seems quite fairly enough that the charter school is only $1,000 per month. Why not send them there instead of this $11,000 per a day for this ASD program? Beats me. Um, again, you have it going on with the Lakeside Educational getting a check, $2,000.25 on February 28th, uh, the last day of the month explains it, you know, uh, and that's transportation. I thought we were providing the transportation here, guys, not them. Um, you know, uh, Amazon purchases. Whoa, 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 Amazon purchases? Come on. I mean, I, I hope you're getting a good deal off this. Are you getting at least the Amazon Prime? I mean, my God, because right here it says Amazon promotional discount only, uh, what, what, 65 cents? Jeez. I mean, that, that's something. Um, that is my conclusion of uh, public comment on, uh, on agenda items for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Approval of minutes, February 5th, 2019, interim meeting, board minutes K, and February 19th, 2019, regular meeting, board minutes L. Is there a motion? And a second? second? Any comments or questions? Ms. Fair? Mr. Bedard? Aye. Mr. Chapman? Aye. Ms. Jordan? Aye. Mr. Lapidus? Aye. Mr. Rayer? Aye. Ms. Sarsfield? Ms. Lipinski? Aye. Dr. Teratuski? Aye. Approval of the Treasurer's Report, Treasurer's Report F. Is there a motion? motion. And a second? second? Any comments or questions? Mr. Bedard? Aye. Mr. Chapman? Aye. Ms. Jordan? Aye. Mr. Lapidus? Aye. Mr. Rayer? Aye. Ms. Lipinski? Aye. Dr. Teratuski? Aye. Reports and information? And we'll call this the show and tell portion of the <laughs> of the meeting. Um, Dr. Hacker, uh, recognitions and awards. Thank you. I actually was going to do this one bit of recognition a little later on the agenda, but given that we have a very large audience here, I thought it was very appropriate that for a first order of business this evening, we want to recognize, and I'm going to ask him to come forward, Dr. Andre McLaurin. <laughs> Dr. McLaurin. So for those of you who may not be aware, last week he was Mr. McLaurin, and after concluding five years of intensive work, effort, and studies, Andre successfully defended his doctoral dissertation yesterday at Immaculata University, and he is now officially to be known as Dr. McLaurin, and it was quite the joy today to be over at his school where he is the proud principal at Enfield Elementary School as a surprise to Dr. McLaurin all of the children at 3 o'clock came out of their classrooms with their teachers, lined the hallways with signs and so forth, and cheered for him after they got him out of his office <laughs> on ostensibly another issue. So, Andre, you certainly deserve all the recognition you got from your students and your staff. I know that they all know that you've been involved in this pursuit for the last several years. I personally know from our conversations how invested you were in the work. So I'm going to ask you, if you don't mind, just to share a little bit about what your doctoral dissertation was all about, because it certainly applies to the work that we do here. Sure. So I, I want to first thank uh, you, Dr. Hacker, as well as the school board as well as uh, the staff at Erdnheim Elementary School and fellow administrators. This has definitely been a journey for me personally for the past five years. And so 
to be prepared in a position to be able to defend, you, you think back to all the experiences you've had along the way. And I do feel as though my experience here at Springfield Township School District has prepared me greatly to sit into a room and be able to defend my study. So I want to thank everybody in the room. I want to thank the teachers, the staff, my fellow administrators, as well as the school board and Dr. Hacker once again just for this, this opportunity uh, to be able to speak today. So my study was actually on elementary teachers' perception of student resiliency. Uh, I just did this yesterday for about 45 minutes. I'll keep <laughs> this one. Down. I know. I'll keep this brief. But one of the, 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 the interesting parts of my study were really about teachers' perception and the ability for students to be resilient. And I, I found myself interested in this study just over the course of a couple, the past few years, realizing that I want students to be successful. And I want students to be able to overcome challenging challenges or adversity. But I also found that for some reason it just seemed as if some of our students weren't able to do that. And so I found myself compelled to want to dig into this work and identify a little bit more about how we could best support our students. And so the study really from, for me revealed a lot in terms of research. The idea that teacher-student relationships are huge. It is probably the most important factor for students to be successful or resilient um, in spite of any form of adversity that they might face, whether that be poverty or trauma teacher-student relationships are important. Another part of the study that stood out as well was the idea that we have to take time to teach and educate our students on what it means to be socially aware of themselves. Can we teach them to be able to self-monitor, be self-aware, socially aware, as well as be able to make, build positive relationships with peers and make responsible decisions? In my study, what was interesting was that all the teachers who participated shared that they felt that all of those things were important. But they also sh they shared that the challenge in that is how do we find the time to do the work? And so my charge as a, as a doctoral, uh, obviously just finishing, but to continue on with research, is to continue to work and find ways to do this work. It's important. If we can teach our students how to become more self-aware and socially aware and develop their, their social emotional skills and build on teacher relationships, all of our students can really be resilient. And so my study concluded that all as, as all educators would believe it's important, the next step for us is how to find time to make sure that we do the work to really support our students. Thank you. Well, it's wonderful work, Andre, and I know you poured your heart and soul into it. And as we all know, it's very challenging to be able to balance your professional responsibilities, yeah. your family life with your wife and your two young daughters, mm -hmm. your beautiful daughters, and also your academic study. So I congratulate you on being able to devote ample time and energy to all three of those aspects of your life and uh, I, I know you're going to continue to remain proud every time you hear someone address you by the word doctor in front of your name and you deserve it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So thank you everyone for your patience while we took a moment to recognize Dr. McLaurin. At this time I'm going to call upon Dr. Vitza who will come forward. We have some middle school students who we would like to recognize for some outstanding accomplishments and Mr. Fuller who's going to come as well as principal of Springfield Township Middle School. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Um, we are very fortunate to have four students from my classroom that we're recognizing today who have received awards with three different organizations. Um, one of the students is at the high school now, and the other three are currently in my classroom. So why don't we start, um, we will go oldest first. Riley, come on up. Riley is currently a ninth grader at the high school. Riley has been working on playwriting since seventh grade. When she was in seventh grade, um, she had Ms. Bloom as her primary ELA teacher, and she worked with Ms. Bloom on her play. Um, in my classroom, we submitted the plays. We brought the final draft to closure, and she submitted the play. Riley went on to do independent work in eighth grade while she was with Mrs. Andre Borges in playwriting and this award recognizes her overcoming obstacles and pursuing excellence in playwriting. She was recognized downtown in Philadelphia um, two weeks ago, I believe, um, at the Drake Theater for her accomplishment. And she was also recognized with, um, with <coughs> Anthony Martinez Briggs, our playwright who's been working with us for three years. So we are all very proud. 
Um, so, uh, one of the things that's great about our writing-based curriculum is that uh, our English teachers find these authentic audiences that happen outside of the school. Um, and so kids write for audiences uh, everywhere, and our teachers do a lot to make that happen. Probably nobody more than Dr. Vitsa here. So the next awards that we have are about uh, places where we found audiences, um, and our students have received accolades from places outside of our school. So, uh, the first person that we're going to recognize here is Julia Rubin. And Julia is receiving the Patriots Challenge, which is a research contest that highlights the contribution of black patriots made during the American Revolutionary War. Um, and you have the uh, African American Monument at Valley Forge there, is that okay? Good evening, everyone. My name is Alexis Brown. I am the, the chair of the Patriots Committee for Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated Valley Forge Alumni Chapter. We erected the Patriots of African Descent Monument, which you see here in Valley Forge National Historical Park in 1993. It's the first monument on federal ground that recognizes the contributions made by black soldiers who served in the American Revolutionary War. So over the past 20 years or so, we've done an essay contest. This year, we did a reboot of the essay contest, and we called it the Patriots Challenge. And we opened it up to students not only being able to submit essays, but to submit poems, raps, um, to just be more creative. And we had a very large response. We, uh, we serve Chester County and Montgomery County, so we reached out to all of the middle schools in both of those counties. Julia is one of our three winners, and so she will receive a $150 reward, and we have a certificate for her right now that says, Patriots Challenge 2019 Contest winter Winner presented to Julia R Rubin, Springfield Township Middle School, Delta Sigma Theta, Valley Forge Alumni Chapter. It's signed by our president, Tracy Howard, by Alexis M. Brown, which is me, I'm the uh, Patriots Chair, and by Kim Singleton, who is our co-chair of Patriots. So on behalf of DST, we'd like to congratulate you and thank you very much for participating. Julia wrote a lovely poem. Okay. And we'd also like to extend to Julia the opportunity to read it at our wreath-laying ceremony in, on June 8th at oh. the park. <laughs> on three. three. Ms. Brown, I just want to thank you and the lovely ladies alongside of you for making an effort to be here this evening. It's very special that you were willing to travel here and bestow this award upon Julia. And we thank you so much for making that effort to be here with us and to also to explain about the history, to bring the artifact with you, to show the monument. So thank you so much for enlightening all of us and for taking the time to be here. We greatly appreciate that. It's very special. And then uh, finally, we have two winners um, from the Heroes and Heroines in Celtic Mythology and Celebrations uh, competition held by the ladies of the Ancient Order of Hibernia, uh, represented by Judy Meeks. Um, and these winners are in first place, Luke Lee. And in second place, Kate Matthews. I'm sorry, third place. Good evening, everybody. My name is Judy Meeks, and I am a member of the Ancient Order of Hibarians. We are a Irish Catholic group um, whose mission is to raise funds for our local charities and communities and families in need. Um, as a part of our Irish history, 
We run a contest every year to middle schools and high schools in the area. And I'm thrilled to say that two of your students won first and third place for our writing contest. So I'm always impressed because the essays are due on November 15th when it's a time of getting back to school, getting into classes, extracurricular activities, and on a voluntary basis, they write these wonderful essays. So job well done. Um, we're so proud, and you should be as well to have two students in your um, school to win this award. And Judy, thanks to you as well for coming this evening to bestow these awards upon Luke and Kate. We're very proud of them, along with Riley and Julia and Dr. Vitsa. Thank you so much for the wonderful work you're doing and for also giving these students the opportunity to vie for these awards and to be recognized for their wonderful work. So congratulations to all of our middle school winners. Yeah, and I'm very I have proud of as well you should be. And I have one more student to mention today. Okay. We found out um, late today that Brady Welsh, who is an eighth grader at the middle school, won first prize in the Pennsylvania Media and Design Competition for website design in Montgomery County, and so he's going to States. Perfect. That's wonderful to hear. Thanks for mentioning that, Zach. Great. So at this time, I'd like Dr. Rittenhouse to come up and know that uh, at least two of our art teachers, three of our art teachers are here. Okay, wonderful. Ms. Greenwald, Ms. Silvius, and Mr. Kobaz. Hey, Dr. Ritt. Good evening, everybody. Before I present the certificates to our students and recognize their accomplishments, I'd like to thank my wonderful staff. This is the department here. This is the art department. Kristen Greenewalt, Mark Kobaz, and Jen Silvius, they do a wonderful job. It's a very popular program uh, here at the high school, um, and I thank you for all your efforts. Um, we have, uh, I'm proud to say this year, we have 37 pieces that were um, recognized at jury shows. And they are juried and judged by professionals in five different venues. Uh, we had six winners. Rebecca Lee, we recognized at the last board meeting. We have um, five winners uh, for this meeting. Uh, and um, Annie Ryan's not here this evening, um, but she, she's working. Uh, she won the Art Award at Montgomery County Community College's annual art show at the Pottstown campus for a fused and assembled glass and paper sculpture. And Maxine Gongon is a Wharton Eschrick Museum printmaking exhibition finalist for her silhouette, and she's also working this evening. Um, and I wanted to make sure that they were recognized. Um, however, we have two of our students who are here tonight. So, if, Emma, if you could please come up, please. And this is Emma Fryman. And uh, she entered a piece in the 32nd annual Touch the Future Student Art Exhibition at Arcadia University. It's a very prestigious show. And she won 3D single medium sculpture category for a fused and slumped glass bowl, so, uh, which is very exciting. Um, so congratulations. And we can get some pictures here with, the, with your friends in the art department. Hold on. And if Morgan Evans could please come up here to the microphone. Uh, Morgan has been recently awarded two awards. First is the Wharton Eschrick Museum imprint exhibition, which I mentioned before. First place for her Selma print, and that's the first certificate. The second certificate is for, again, the PSEA uh, first place best in show. That is the top award at the show. Um, I don't have my glasses on. I see some some faint pictures up on the on the TV, and you'll see that we put the pictures up and the artwork's up on the TV. But this was first place, best in show, 
uh, the top award for her life-size self-portrait. And congratulations, Morgan, very much. Congratulations again to both Emma and Morgan. And I will tell you that every year, we have a spectacular festival of the arts where student artwork is displayed. And Mr. Kobaz will tell you that every year I say to him, can I buy some of these pieces? <laughs> and when I bid on some of the pieces last year, unfortunately, I was not a winner. I thought that I was giving high numbers in for bids, but obviously not high enough. That tells you a lot about the quality of the work that our kids produce as the result of the three of you and your guidance and mentoring. And I know from last year, I know Morgan was brought forward last year as one of the highlighted pieces of art. So I know how talented our students are and certainly Emma and Morgan both are so representative of the quality of the work that our kids do. So shout out. Festival of the Arts, do we have a date yet? May 15th. Thank you, Mr. Kobaz. All right, be there. Thank you, everybody. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. And we'll have the district PTA report, Sharon Panera. Well, I cleared the room. Oh. <laughs> you, you did. Bring a chair, Sharon. <laughs> Put on the over 50s. <laughs> um, good evening. Haven't seen you all in a while. Um, I'm here to tell you about some of the awesome stuff that we've been doing with the PTA. Um, this past fall, we approved $2,335.39 worth of mini grants. We covered everything from upgrading the reeds and some musical supplies that would help our students both the middle school and the high school, produce some better sounds that might motivate them to practice a little more. Um, Mr. Kovas just left, but we um, provided a mini grant for him for an alumni, and I neglected to write her name down. I think it may, oh, here it is, Catherine Whitlock. She's a cardiograph, cartograph, I think that's with map, maps. Uh -huh. And she is living, she's an alumni, she's uh -huh. living in California, making a successful living. And we were able to fund a mini grant to bring her back here to speak to our students. So that was great. Um, some of the other stuff that we did was we provided mini grants for calming devices for some of our students. We were able to provide money to purchase Pro Tools Recording Studio software. This is professional mixing and recording so software that's gonna be used here in the high school. Um, from what I understand, there might be some movement along the way that that might be some sort of, I guess maybe an elective at one point, but we purchased that. Um, at our last meeting, we approved $500 worth of uh, senior scholarships for this year and $340 for our eighth grade moving up uh, ceremony scholarships. Uh, speaking of eighth graders, our eighth grade committee is working really, really hard preparing for all the great activities our eighth graders have and they're moving up ceremony. Um, we had to do a couple of things this year um, with the PTA due to low membership. Um, we had to cut some stuff out of our um, budget and the best place for us to start was removing our school directory. Nine out of 10 of them probably don't even get out of the backpacks until the parent cleans the backpack at the end of the year. Um, so that was a huge expense for us. That runs us close to $850 a year just to produce that paper. Um, so we had to drop that from our budget. And we had to do some adjusting with our teacher appreciation lunch, but the good news is, is we found enough money that we are gonna be able to thanks to Vicki at Philabagel, give our teachers at the middle school and the high school an awesome appreciation luncheon. Um, so thanks to Vicki 
at Philobagel for working with us. <laughs> at our last meeting, we approved it and cleared it with Dr. Rick. Uh, Rittenhouse that we are once again going to do a water bottle drive to have water bottles hand out um, at our graduation ceremony which I think this will be our third year now doing it and it's very well received so uh, we also approved a hundred dollar expense for our senior luncheon to offset the cost of the cake at our at the luncheon and Every year, if you have an eighth grade parent, if you were ever an eighth grade par parent in the district, you know when it's eighth grade moving up ceremony, we rely on seventh grade parents to bring in refreshments for, and it's getting harder and harder every year to get those refreshments in from seventh grade parents. So this year I moved, not I, I'm sorry, we moved $100 into the eighth grade budget for them to buy a cake for the moving up ceremony to help alleviate getting some of those refreshments donated. Um, so that's pretty much what we're, we're doing. We will have our spring mini grants um, at our next meeting and hopefully we have our money in our budget to approve that. But sadly, um, I'm here to say that the PTA is also finding ourselves with some staffing issues this year. Um, sadly, we. We lost Lori Sapola, who moved to North Carolina, and the other president that was supposed to move up this year, her daughter will be leaving the district. That leaves us with no one to move up. Um, so what we are going to do is, I discussed this at length at our meeting this month. I'm gonna be working on a recruitment letter with Dr. Rittenhouse and some of the other members of our executive board. We would like to be able to send that out district-wise to Enfield, or, uh, I'm sorry, to Erdenheim for the upcoming sixth grade parents um, and see if we can get some new people on board that way. Um, in that letter, we'll have descriptions. If we could send this out as an e-blast district-wide, it would be really important. Um, I've also stated um, at every back to school uh, night that, you know, the middle school and high school level PTA isn't like your elementary PTA. We don't have book, you know, book fairs. We don't ask you to volunteer at carnivals. Um, we have one fundraiser and that's our membership. And it's a whopping $20 for a family. And we lowered our price to $10 for teachers. And we still did not have, you would think at that cost we would have 100% participation, but we don't. Um, we only use volunteers for sixth grade activities, which is the grandparents' day, and our eighth grade activities. Um, I truly stand by my statement that I, I make every time at back to school nights that, you know, don't think of us as just a PTA. Look at us as our as your academic booster club for, for your children. You know, if your child plays football, you are a member of that booster club and you support that and you probably buy $80 jackets. You know, we're asking for $20. Um, you know, imagine what we could do if every teacher and every family joined our PTA. We could double our mini grants and we could double our scholarships if, if we had 100% participation, and it's just not there. So moving forward, um, with the uncertainty of our executive board for next year, I reached out to our local PTA district representative, and we can, as a PTA, still move forward next year with two options. If we are successful in finding a president and vice presidents for next year before May, which I always try to look at that glass full, but I don't know if we could do that. Um, I will join the PTA next year. I do not have any more children after this year in the district. I'm, I'm done. Um, 12 years in the PTA and I'm, I'm done. <laughs> um, but what I can do is I will be allowed to join the PTA as a member of a community, which I found out that community members can join our PTA. Um, and I can be a mentor to that person, which I would do anyway. I wouldn't just turn my back and walk away. Um, if we are unable to find replacements, 
Um, and there are people that want to join, but they're not like ready to make that commitment. I again can join the PTA as a community member and I can hold an executive board position as president until the following school year, until we can find someone that feels confident enough to move forward. Um, my number one goal, and I'm not putting fear into the district or the community, but my number one goal, and I know Dr. Rittenhouse is behind us, um, he was with us at our meeting and him and I have talked on the phone. Um, we don't want to see this dissolve. We don't want to see it go away. You know, not only can we work with our schools, but our PTA, the Pennsylvania PTA, is also our voice in Harrisburg. You know, it's, it's more than what you just see us do here. So um, with the hope, um, new members moving in from the elementary school, I will do whatever I have to. I, you know, I came back because I didn't want to see things go away for my children and their friends. And I love this community too much that I, and our teachers too much that I wouldn't want the PTA to go away for them. Sharon, thank you so much for your passion and for your interest. Um, we will assist you with whatever needs to be done in terms of getting communication out. I think sometimes one of the problems with back to school night is not that the parents don't hear you, but that they're thinking about the evening Think, ahead right, right. and visiting the teachers and that's first and foremost. But perhaps at this time of year, looking forward to next year, we can interest some parents. So we'll be happy to do that. Okay. For you. Um, so that's basically what's going on with us so uh, unfortunately fortunately haven't told my husband yet but I might have to be <laughs> on the board next year to make this transition go smoothly and I have no problem with making that commitment okay um, just one thing before um, two things actually real quick before I um, leave I just want to um, thank Dr. Rittenhouse and um, Mr. Sharon, my daughter's um, guidance counselor. She has been um, wanting to be a special education teacher since probably third grade. And at the end of last year, we went in to do her scheduling and, and, and Mr. Sharon recommended an internship for her at the middle school. And we thought that would be great than her taking Spanish for the fifth time. and. I have to tell you, if there's any way that our district can do more of these types of programs, work co-op programs with our children, she is thriving. She is loving it. She was even granted permission to sit in from a parent on an IEP meeting. Um, it has been so successful for her. and. I think it's an opportunity that probably every one of our juniors or seniors should be given here at the high school. So I thank you guys, whoever approved that type of a, you know, internship or work study program, it's been phenomenal. So thank you. The other thing I wanted to just tell you guys shortly is um, a sweet little story about, um, about our little community. Um, I was approached via um, email by one of our teachers, eighth grade. Um, we had some families that were having some trouble um, coming up with their activity fees for the eighth grade. That includes their yearbook, their dance, their, you know, all their little stuff, their parties. And she approached me and asked me if the PTA had any money to, to subsidize. And sadly, we didn't. Um, so I reached out to another community member, Donna Halligan, with Shane's Kindness. And within 20 minutes, I had a yes. The next day, I had the money. And two days after that, Mrs. Groob had the money. I don't know who these children were. I don't know, want to know who they were. But I just thought that it was so sweet the way the circle went around and how we, as a community, PTA couldn't do it, so I reached out to somebody else. Same thing happened about three weeks later. I get a call from the high school. Parents couldn't, students couldn't afford their senior activities. I don't have the fear of the word no, so I went to Donna again. <laughs> Donna said yes. 
and she paid activities for three of our seniors here. So, um, you know, you got kindness, pass it on. And if you ever see Donna Halligan, just give her a pat on the back because she didn't have to do that and it was phenomenal. Thanks. You're welcome. Student Council Report. Uh, student Council Report, Addison O'Malley, Evan Carr. <laughs> Evan? I, uh, Evan Kerr, I'm in 11th grade, here to read uh, this. So, March 4th to 8th, Student Council organized a road to the Final Four Spirit Week in anticipation of our March Madness tournament, which took place on Friday, March 8th. So during that week, we dressed as Olympians, patriotic Americans, our Spartan and college gear. Um, and on Fat Tuesday, we dressed for Mardi Gras and like we all distributed beads and um, like little, um, this little wash off tattoos <laughs> for people. Um, and so after a morning of classes, facing off against each other, like freshmen, sophomore and all of them, um, they went to play in overtime after lunch and going into both of the games the freshmen and juniors met in overtime and they won and then it was the freshmen and juniors in the final round and they led a stunning comeback from down six to zero to force an overtime victory this was followed by an upset with the faculty beating the student all-stars <laughs> uh, not my quotes. <laughs> <laughs> the unified sports team had a fantastic game, and the gym erupted when the students hit the court. We appreciate the support of the other clubs involved in making March Madness a success, the cheerleaders, Spartan Steppers, the pep band, and the cast of Bye Bye Birdie. We also appreciate the staff team, the <coughs> not old but vintage, for risking their life <laughs> playing on the court. It's a great day to be a Spartan. The best part was raising 290 for the MIP Foundation, a local charity benefiting team oncology patients. Um, as for upcoming events that we're really looking forward to on April 9th, we have a Chipotle fundraiser and dresser. So uh, if you guys could come to that, that'd be great. Um, pie the principles during lunch. Buck a minute during lunch. I'm not sure what that one is actually. <laughs> but wing night, our annual blood drive and Spartanthon. As always, we appreciate your support and thank you for all that you have done for the community. Have a stupendous night and a happy spring. Um, and this is just me off the record here. I just wanted to say really quick that like I never realized how much this community comes together to like help my personal education. And I think it's just really cool to see that you guys will like give up your time and just help make my personal education better. So just a thank you from me and uh, the students. So. Uh, thank thank you. you. Have a good night. Take care. Thanks. Okay, administrative reports, Dr. Hacker. Okay, thank you. Um, first of all, um, two past events. We had our spring musical at the high school, Bye Bye Birdie, and the middle school show, Once on This Island Junior, both of which were phenomenal performances and presentations. It's, it's always amazing to see the talent of our kids. I know they work so hard and they did such a terrific job on both of those productions. So um, those, those kids that have dancing, singing, stage crew, any other talent, costuming, continue please to come out and, and be in our shows because it's a wonderful collaborative experience for the children. They get to work together, bond together, and of course learn a lot by working with our theater directors. Um, two upcoming things that I would like to announce. Our Equitable Practices Committee is going to be meeting this Thursday, the 21st, at 6.30 in the Middle School Library, and I'm very happy to announce that Gertrude Mama Ham Hamilton, who is a spry 102 years old, is going to be the featured speaker on Thursday evening. She is an African-American woman who will recount the story of her life growing up in the South on a farm. And it's really quite a fascinating look at history over a 100 year span of time in terms of what her experiences were 
growing up on the farm, raising their own fruits, vegetables, meats, and so forth right there on the farm, um, how soap was made out of lye that they boiled. And she has some pretty interesting tales to recount, not to mention, of course, living through some pretty turbulent times in the history of our country. So if you'd really like to have a fascinating evening, come out and hear Mama Ham at 6.30 on Thursday. And then, of course, our ongoing committees will continue on meeting as well after the end of her presentation. We also have our wonderful Voices of Excellence Showcase on Friday evening, March 29th, which is always a phenomenally successful show. Lots of students who are involved. It's really a terrific evening. And so I encourage everyone to come out to the VA OE showcase as well. Um, one other thing I would like to mention, um, board members in your packets, you've received a copy of the Special Education Comprehensive Plan that has been prepared by Dr. Johnston. It is now available on our website for public review tomorrow morning, okay, for public review. Um, the public has 30 days not only to review the plan as do all of you as board members, but also to offer any commentary or input, we would encourage you to reach out to Dr. Johnston if there's any comment that you have on the comprehensive plan before we submit it to the Department of Education. And we certainly invite public commentary on the plan as well. And finally, if you look over there where we took all those pictures, you'll see the design boards that have been prepared showing the results of many, 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 many meetings that we've all been engaged in over the course of a two-year period of time for our brand new elementary school. The first board on the extreme left shows what the hallways look like with the wooden touches um, that will be framing the floors. The terrazzo floors are on the bottom. The office spaces are up above showing what cabinetry, flooring, and seating looks like. Uh, the middle board shows our classroom designs. As you can see, um, unlike other schools that have been built in the area that have been going with colors like orange and purple and chartreuse, we stuck to the time-honored primary colors. We figure that 50 years from now, when that building is still around, so will the primary color design. So we stuck with primary colors, so that shows, again, flooring, cabinetry, and some of the interior touches in the classrooms in different wings of the new elementary school. To the bottom right, you'll see the carpeting that will be in the new music room, along with the bright yellow acoustic panels. So we're very excited about the color scheme there, as well as the col colors on the left, which will be in our large group spaces as well in the building. And then finally, over on the right, those are all panels and designs from the new library media center, including carpeting, the help desk, seating, and so forth. So when you get a chance after the meeting, please, I invite you and anyone else in the audience to please go over and take a look at those designs. Like I said, they're the culmination of many hours of people coming together, including teachers as well as administrators, to offer input on the designs. Okay, that's it for my report. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Hacker. Uh, we'll move on to new business. Personnel. The Board of School Directors approves the following personnel as presented in the attachment. Certificated personnel, confidential personnel, support personnel, temporary personnel, extra pay for extra responsibilities, and conference workshop attendance. Is there a motion? A second? Any comments or questions? Mr. Bedard? Aye. Mr. Chapman? Aye. Ms. Jordan? Aye. Mr. Lapidus? Aye. Mr. Rayer? Aye. Ms. Sapinski? Aye. Dr. Teratuski? Aye. Number two, VMware Support Renewal. The Board of School Directors approves the attached three-year VMware Support Renewal with Interphase Systems for the amount of $17,920.32. Is there a motion? Motion. And a second? Yes. Any comments or questions? Mr. Bedard? Aye. Mr. Chapman? Aye. Ms. Jordan? Aye. Mr. Lapidus? Aye. Mr. Rayer? Aye. Ms. Sapinski? Aye. Dr. Teratuski? Aye. Aye. Number three, network equipment. The Board of School Directors approves the purchase uh, agreement of networking equipment, wireless, and services with Networking Matters, Inc. 
for the, in the amount of $166,249.21 contingent upon approval of the 40% federal E-rate discount. Is there a motion? Um, second? Any comments or questions? Okay. Okay. Mr. Bedard? Aye. Mr. Chapman? Aye. Ms. Jordan? Aye. Mr. Lapidus? Aye. Mr. Rayer? Aye. Ms. Sapinski? Aye. Dr. Teratuski? Aye. Number four, firewall and UPS. The Board of School Directors approves the purchase of agreements for the district's firewall and UPS replacement with E Plus Group, Inc. for the, in the amount of $167,246 contingent upon the approval of the 40% federal E-rate discount. Is there a motion? Second. Oh, any yes. comments or questions? Sorry. Uh, quick question. The 40% mm -hmm. discount, mm -hmm. is that the dollar amount only uh, after the next year's discount, or is there going to be an additional 40%? There's an additional, this is retail, mm -hmm. so the 40% discount comes off of those prices. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And that's for both the items? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> any other comments or questions? Thank you, Mr. Oliver. Ms. Care? Mr. Bedard? Aye. Mr. Chapman? Ms. Jordan? Aye. Mr. Lapidus? Aye. Mr. Rayer? Aye. Ms. Sapinski? Aye. Dr. Teratuski? Aye. Number five, Hobson's Inc. The board approves the contract with Hobson's Inc. for Naviance consultation and support beginning April 1, 2019 and concluding March 31, 2020 in the amount of $4,500. The hours will be utilized by counselors at Erdenheim STMS and STHS to support building goals focused on post-secondary planning and career readiness. Is there a motion? And a second? Any comments or questions? Mr. Bedard? Aye. Mr. Chapman? Aye. Ms. Jordan? Aye. Mr. Lapidus? Aye. Mr. Rayer? Aye. Ms. Sapinski? Aye. Dr. Teratuski? Aye. This feels like a repetition, but I think the dates are different. Okay. Um, <laughs> Hobson's Inc. The board approves the contract with Hobson's Inc. for Naviance consultation and support beginning August 1, 2019 and concluding July 31, 2020 in the amount of $4,500. The hours will be utilized uh, by counselors at Erdenheim, STMS, and STHS to support building goals focused on post-secondary planning and career readiness. Is there a motion? And a second? Any comments or questions? Yeah, just what's the difference? Does anybody yeah. know? It's just the dates. One is for the remainder of this school year because additional training was needed. The other is for next year. The date, these dates overlap, yeah, though. Yeah. Um, no, the one is beginning April. Oh, I'm sorry. They do. I'm not sure why, Dr. Yannacone. Mr. Bedard? Aye. Mr. Chapman? Aye. Ms. Jordan? Aye. Mr. Lapidus? Aye. Mr. Rayer? Aye. Ms. Sapinski? Aye. Dr. Teratuski? Aye. Number seven, Watershed Consulting Services. The board approves the contract with Watershed Consulting Services for BASIS, Belonging and Sociocultural Identities Training, Part 2, to be conducted June 17th and 18th, 2019, and administrative team training to be conducted July 17th, 2019, in the amount of $3,000. Is there a motion? motion. And a second? second? Any comments or questions? Okay, Mr. Bedard? Aye. Mr. Chapman? Aye. Ms. Jordan? Aye. Mr. Lapidus? Aye. Mr. Rayer? Aye. Ms. Lipinski? Aye. Dr. Teratuski? Aye. Number eight, professional development training. The board approves a professional development training agreement with the Montgomery County Intermediate Unit for literacy program development at no cost to the district. Is there a motion? Motion. And second? Second. Any comments or questions? No cost to the district. No, you can 
very nice line. It's through grant funding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. IDEA. Okay. Mr. Bedard? Aye. Mr. Chapman? Aye. Ms. Jordan? Aye. Mr. Lapidus? Aye. Mr. Rayer? Aye. Ms. Lipinski? Aye. Dr. Teratuski? Aye. Number nine, Power School, Special Education, ELL, and RTI. The Board of School Directors approves the license and subscription to Power School, Special Education, Response to Intervention, and ELL, not to exceed $5,730. Is there a motion? And a second? Any comments or questions? Ms. Kerr? Mr. Bedard? Aye. Mr. Chapman? Aye. Ms. Ms. Jordan? Aye. Mr. Lapidus? Mr. Rare. Aye. Ms. Lipinski? Aye. Dr. Teratuski? Aye. Number 10, Ruvna Inc. Sales Order. The Board of School Directors approves the subscription agreement between Ruvna Inc. and the School District of Springfield Township to provide software which will allow SDST administrators to account for and communicate with students and district staff during times of emergency in the amount of $17,715 for a term effective February 20th, 2019 to July 1, 2020. Funding for this software is through the PCCD grant, PA Commission for Crime and Delinquency. And let me just add, you may have heard about the state grants that were given out for safety and security. All districts got 25,000. That's what's funding the Rubna software for. We wrote it for the entire $25,000. It includes additional security software as well as additional security cameras. Any other comments or questions? Okay, Ms. Kerr. Oh, I'm sorry. I have a motion. Yes, you did. I, I thought I did take a motion. <laughs> and <laughs> let's vote. Mr. Bedard? Aye. Mr. Chapman? Aye. Ms. Jordan? Mr. Lapidus? Mr. Ryer? Aye. Ms. Lipinski? Aye. Dr. Teratuski? Aye. Number 11, Plan Con Part H. The Board of School Directors approves Plan Con Part H series of 2019 project financing for the School District of Springfield Township's new K2 Early Learning Center. Is there a motion? Motion. Second? Second. Any comments or questions? Mr. Bedard? Aye. Mr. Chapman? Aye. Ms. Jordan? Aye. Mr. Laptus? Aye. Mr. Rare? Aye. Ms. Sapinski? Aye. Dr. Teratuski? Aye. Number 12, eFinance Plus Upgrade. The Board of School Directors approves the Power School eFinance Plus Upgrade and the Statement of Work, SOW, not to exceed $14,167.50. Is there a motion? And a second? Any comments or questions? Mr. Bedard? Aye. Mr. Chapman? Aye. Ms. Jordan? Aye. Mr. Laptus? Aye. Mr. Rare? Aye. Ms. Lipinski? Aye. Dr. Teratuski? Aye. Are there any com public comments on non-agenda items? Uh, name is Giuseppe, G-I-U-S-E-P-P-E. Monticelli, M-O-N-T-I-C-E-L-L-I, Ward 72. Um, good evening, honorable and not honorable uh, board members, and good evening, Esquire. Uh, I would like to comment about a serious matter here. School zone. Um, you're building that fabulous school down there. There's no school zone. Um, quite frankly, and there was no school zone over here by the middle school and high school. It took upon, quite frankly, a student to be almost killed while riding his bicycle in order for this issue to be looked at. That is quite a shame. He was riding his bicycle, a uh, car ran into him, he had a few scrapes and bumps. His mother pleaded to this district and also to the township Board of Commissioners to look at the shoe insurance here where you can resolve it. It took the township in order to pay for a PennDOT study to be done over there. 
That should have been done years ago by this district. And I wonder why it wasn't. So we gotta hope while this new building's going up, uh, that there's going to be a school zone implemented if PennDOT sees fit through their evaluation and study for the new Enfield school. I, you know, I, I was quite amazed and fabricasted when I heard that at, at that meeting. That was quite, quite a, some speech to hear. Shame you were not there to hear it. I found out that uh, the board, the board's uh, administration, uh, was in front of the planning commission multiple times in order for approval of the building that's going on right now. <sighs> you have to view those transcripts and see what's going on there. You have asbestos being digging up. That Antoli building right there was built in 1968. It's a shame. You know, you're putting that asbestos in the air. What's going on there? That is a shame. Then we have here also a um, final subject thing that I think uh, your Esquire would be very pleased at. That I'm going to read here before I end my public comment. It is um, currently a function of free speech under our system of government is to invite dispute. It may best indeed best serve its high purpose when it induces a condition of unrest creates dissatisfaction with conditions as they are, or even stirs people to anger. Speech is often provocative and challenging. It may strike at prejudices and preconceptions and have profound unsettling effects as it proceeds for a sentence of an idea. That is why freedom of speech, though not absolute, is, uh, though not absolute, shown likely, um, I don't know the absolute, let's see here, mm -mm. is nevertheless protected against censorship or punishment unless shown likely to reduce a clear and present danger of a serious substantive evil that rises far above public inconvenience, annoyance, or unrest. There is no room under our Constitution for a more restrictive view for the alternative would lead to a standardization of ideas either by legislators, courts, or dominant political or community groups. Terminal versus Chicago, United States Supreme Court, 1949. That is my conclusion of my comments about public agenda, about non-public agenda this evening. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, their future meeting dates, uh, Tuesday, April 2nd, 2019, would be the interim board meeting. Um, that's a tentative date um, at this time, and that's 7 p.m. in the Freeze Memorial Lobby. And a school board meeting, the regular board meeting, is scheduled for Tuesday, April 23rd at 7 p.m. in the Freeze Memorial Lobby. And I just want to point out, notice the dates, because normally <clears throat> they're two weeks apart, but because of the spring vacation, the second meeting, the regular public meeting, is the 23rd. Mm -hmm. And also the uh, Equitable Practices Committee this Thursday at 6.30 p.m. in the middle, li school, middle library. school library. Yes. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Oh, do you have, uh, is there another public comment? I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. It's okay. Let's Hi. get out of the corner here. <laughs> Angela Beal-Toffee. Hi, Angela. How are you today? Also representing the Multicultural Parent Association. Um, just like to thank the district for all the work that's being done. Also this year, once again, it's all, almost approaching International Water Safety Day, May 15th of every year. The school district has been actively involved and um, I would like to invite us to once again um, take part uh, in, in that. I would love to assist the district in um, leading that effort as drowning is a, a, a number one neglected public health threat among children and youth with uh, uh, students and children of color being disproportionately impacted. Um, so uh, as also a member of the Scientific Advisory Council for the American Red Cross and Diversity in Aquatics, I look forward to possibly um, communicating with you and Dr. Hacker in the district and just as a supporting that upcoming event. Yes, we do. So thank you so much. Thanks, Angela. Sorry, didn't mean to no, slight okay. you at all. <laughs> okay.
Before you end that, I will point out for the record here that I forgot to mention. Mr. I find Mr. it very. Uh, you have I'm no. Sorry. There's thirty minutes of lies throughout the whole period here. I'm going to mention this real quick. I, I found it very astonishing that the Board of Commissioners had to relate that there was a change of Leon <coughs> to the Library Committee, changing from Mr. Chapman to Ms. Uh, Sablinski over there. I find Mr. Chapman to be very competent, very much more competent than Ms. Sablinski, and it's a shame that he had to leave that board. That were then my comment. Thank you. Hey, we're adjourned. Thanks.